You ever heard about how Uncle Joe Dispenza developed a legit scientific model for how the pineal gland activates? Yeah, I heard about that years ago, but I found it hard to understand. You am gonna break it down for you real simple like? Okay, why not? Go on now. First off, in his book, Becoming Supernatural, Uncle Joe references a scientific study that stated that basically the pineal gland has crystals in it. So my brain got crystals in it, huh? <laughs> Wow, well you look at that. <laughs> That's key to this whole thing. There's two key words that he highlights in that study that are really important to how it activates. Piezoelectric and transducer. So the piezoelectric effect is when you apply pressure to certain materials and the mechanical stress is changed into an electric charge. And the best example I can think of for that is actually a lighter. Because think about it, mechanical stress equals energy. So the premise is that you've got potential energy stored in the lower three energy centers. And the cerebral spinal fluid is kind of like a river for the energy from the body to move up into the brain and activate the pineal. And you can do this using something called intrathecal pressure, which is the type of pressure that you create when you brace your abs for a squat or a compound movement or something like that. So you breathe in using that intrathecal pressure and it's like sucking liquid up a straw. And that liquid is the cerebral spinal fluid that carries all of the energy into the brain. And that energy from that fluid pushes against the calcite crystals in your pineal gland, which causes it to create an electric charge like the lighter when you flick it. Okay, well how does that fluid actually enter the brain and activate the pineal? I'm, where's the connection? Give me the science! So fluid entering from the fourth ventricle moves up into the third and creates pressure from the top and kind of like the left side, while at the same time the fluid travels around the cerebellum compressing the other side. Now the interesting part is also that the piezoelectric effect is reversible, which means that once the crystals get the electric charge, the crystals stretch as the charge in the field that the charge generates gets larger. Once the crystals stretch as far as they can and reach the limit, the electromagnetic field reverses and the crystals contract and the reversed electromagnetic field moves inward toward the pineal. So the crystals in the pineal expanding and contracting creates a perpetual electromagnetic field that pulsates. Then with the breath, he teaches you you can speed up the cycles per second of the expansion and contraction of that electromagnetic field making the pulses faster, and the faster you get going, the subtler energy signals the antenna of the pineal gland can pick up. Hence, remember the original study that he referenced said that the pineal was also a transducer. If you don't know what that word means, it's just like your TV or radio that transduces signals in the air to give you something to watch on the TV. But that's not the only thing that happens. While all of this is happening, there's something called cilia, or cilia, whatever you want to pronounce it, Latin for eyelashes, which essentially are tiny hairs on the end of the pineal gland. And when the fluid rushes in, remember the cerebral spinal, right? It also tickles those hairs and causes them to release upgraded metabolites of melatonin in the brain. So don't shave? Correct. Now you're getting it. Also during this process, the brain needs to go into a higher frequency in general to facilitate this experience, and we call that brainwave state gamma. Slow down, speed racer. What are gamma brainwaves? So the sympathetic nervous system gets activated by the energy of the cerebrospinal fluid coming up, and this causes it to merge with the parasympathetic. So sympathetic, parasympathetic, merge. Now instead of depleting the body's stored energy, the energy gets fed into the brain by going through the brainstem, right? And then the thalamic gate opens like a door. <laughs> Get that open. And then the energy goes through the reticular formation to the thalamus, where it relays information to the neocortex. And when the energy reaches the thalamic junction, this also sends a message directly to the pineal gland to secrete those upgraded metabolites into the brain. So double signal. When this happens, the thinking neocortex becomes energized and goes into gamma brainwave pattern. It's interesting what the upgraded metabolites do because they actually relax the body while simultaneously awake the brain and the mind, which is kind of hard to comprehend, but we'll get to it. Dr. Joe describes the gamma brain waves as being in bliss, but they're the highest brain wave states that humans are known to have. Frequencies are anything above 30 hertz while most people are in beta, which is around 12 to 30 hertz. Now, all of while this is happening, the whole phenomenon generates a torus field around your body. In the book, he says, at the same time the torus field is moving up and around your body, when the pineal gland becomes activated, a reverse torus field of energy is drawing energy into your body from the top of your 
your head. And since all frequency carries information, now your pineal gland is receiving information from beyond the visible light field and from beyond your senses or the five senses. You've now created an antenna in your brain and this antenna is picking up information from realms beyond matter and beyond space and time. 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 Information is no longer coming from your senses or your eyes interaction with your environment. Instead, you're getting information from the quantum field, baby. From another eye, your third eye, from the pineal gland in the back of your brain. Now let's get back to those metabolites because it's wild what happens. He's got a little handy dandy chart to help describe them. I'll go through them kind of quickly. So remember, all of these are derivatives of melatonin, which means melatonin alchemizes into these. So first you've got benzodiazepines, which I think I said that right, which suppresses the neural activity in the amygdala, which is your survival center. This relaxes your body and it's basically a sedative. This allows your body to relax while your mind is awakened. And then you've got antioxidants that are made and just upgraded ones, so not your average. These are advanced and we can call those penalines. This is part of how your body actually heals through this experience because it's not just about, you know, going into these altered states and be like, oh my God, look at this stuff. It's also about what are the actual benefits that your body has. And so there's a lot of healing that comes with activating the pineal. Another one is what Uncle Joe refers to as a hibernation chemical, which carries a message to extend rest and repair in your body. And I would think about that one in the same way that we typically hear mystics in the East for retreating into solitude, and they do that to reach a form of self-realization. Many of the different characteristics that you'd expect from a mystic of ancient times, this chemical alteration provides. Not wanting to eat, no primitive desires of the human body anymore, just a yearning for self-realization beyond the physical. And the next chemical is one you can find in electric eels, which is wild, but it is what it is. Uncle Joe has a hunch that this is a rare chemical that influences the brain to process those increased amplitudes of energy we've been talking about that he's repeatedly measured in his students. Because remember, this is about the thousands of students he's had, brain scans. I mean, there's a lot of legit science behind this. And in the book, it says something like, imagine an electric eel that literally lights up with energy when it gets stimulated. That's what happens in the brain when it gets activated. But the energy and information that are created do not come from an experience in our environment, which we perceive through our senses but instead from within the brain caused by an upgrade in frequency. When we see those high energy levels in the brain, we know that the person is having a profound subjective experience that can be measured objectively. And finally, the big boy, that is the one of the most powerful substances known to man that gets produced, and that is D to the mother M to the T, baby. This is the classic chemical that has been talked about and used for thousands of years by indigenous people to invoke altered states of consciousness during ceremony. And one more thing from the book that he said, it was something like, some of these experiences have been reported to create profound time dilation, or time appearing infinite, time travel, journeys to the paranormal realms, visions of complex geometric patterns, encounters with spiritual beings, and other mystical interdimensional realities. Many of our students during the pineal gland meditation report amazing encounters beyond their known physical world. Wow, I wasn't expecting you to go that deep. Good shit, man, that's wild. But what's your experience with the pineal? Well, for me, for about five years, I've been able to feel a pulsing feeling coming from the center of my forehead, kind of off and on, kind of randomly. And since it's been going on for such a long time, I can kind of control it now to a certain extent, but other times the pulsing or energy sensation localized at this point has a mind of its own. So I've tried the Uncle Joe's techniques myself, and I've had mystical type experiences as a result. So I can say from my own personal experience that it works. For me, it felt like a pressure buildup in my brain after the energy got up there, and then all of a sudden it was kind of like this mist of fluid energy that came from the top of my head and dissipated kind of all over my body. It was like I was standing under a shower of mist, as weird as that might seem. I felt it the most in my forehead and the feeling associated with it was a huge release and just pure joy beyond the word joy doesn't even, joy doesn't even describe it. Now I know that my experience isn't scientific and super logical people will get mad at me for telling this story. But the thing is that doing this protocol, which we just talked about, 
has produced profound, wild experiences in tens of thousands of people, and these experiences don't make linear sense. They don't make sense to science. And at some point, if someone wants to have experiences that transcend the human domain, they have to let go of the human rules that they've made up for what's real and not, and open up to the possibility of what could be. All right, I hope you enjoyed this here deep dive. I hope you also enjoyed the sound of the river behind me. Shout out to Dr. Joe for doing all of this research. I mean, this is groundbreaking shit, and I'm just grateful that I get to come on here and share this information with you. And I wanna just recommend to you that you check out his book, Becoming Supernatural. Read the book. There's a lot of stuff in there that will blow your mind and very much help you understand the nature of reality. I'm not affiliated with Dr. Joe, I just really like his work. So the link to the book that a lot of this information came from will be in the description. Other than that, if you wanna support the channel, you wanna see more deep dives like this, like the damn video, because you know, when you slap the shit out of that like button, YouTube's like, yeah, yeah. So I guess if people need to, I guess if it needs to be, I guess if you, <laughs> YouTube likes that, and I am just a subservient to the old YouTube god. I'm grateful for you, I just want you to know that. I love you, you're the best. You know that? You're the fucking best. And don't you damn forget it. And shout out to all the people that support me on Patreon right now, because you know what? You really helped to keep this show going. And the Patreon is more of an advanced Patreon, right? It's not your basic Patreon. We've got two workshops a month. Workshops this month are the astral body, the astral experiences, the astral plane is workshop number one. Workshop number two is on the tree of life and mysticism. We've also got a Q&A and a book club. So every week we're doing something on the Patreon. If you want to support the channel, check it out. It links in the description. Other than that, we will see you in the next episode. And until then, peace.